Okay. Uh, All right, Natish, so excited to chat with you. And it's been a fun getting to know you and connect with you and, and see you grow and develop over the last few months. So as we start our conversation here, can you remind me what was going on when we first met and how did we get connected in the first place? Um, that's, yeah. So I had graduated last year uh, from a master's program in robotics, which I was pursuing in, in parallel to working. So in my mind, I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to go back and work in my same company, you know, find a different position. Uh, but when I started looking, I couldn't find a position which I liked that much. Uh, and then I figured I need to actually update my resume, uh, you know, try to reach out to recruiters, find other opportunities. And I was stumped, like, how do I start? I can update my resume, but I sent, uh, you know, but how do I prove to them that, you know, I'm, I'll be able to do this particular job because I was changing fields. Um, so it took me a while. Uh, I ended up uh, creating my own portfolio, but I still felt pretty much clueless, you know, how to start. So I, on LinkedIn, I actually put out a request um, a, for, you know, getting help for setting up my resume, getting a review for it. And a few folks reached out and then you also reached out to me. Uh, and, you know, after reviewing a lot of the testimonials on your uh, LinkedIn page, going through the, uh, the links which you had shared with me, I found your program to be very interesting. I thought, you know, it's not just about the resume. It's, I have to think of it, uh, you know, from a perspective of, apart from the resume, what else I need to uh, uh, showcase to potential recruiters and, uh, you know, employers, uh, you know, my uh, skill sets have to come out from not just my resume, but the way I interview, the way I uh, answer questions, uh, the questions I ask, and uh, that led me to, you know, enrolled in your program. Uh, yeah. Get yeah. Yeah. So we got started in the engineering career accelerator. And so once you got in and you're like, hey, you sort of had, the, uh, you know, you get into something like this, you sort of have an expectation around what you need and what that experience is going to be, be like. But what did that actually turn into? And, and when you start diving in, um, you know, and we, we start with mindset stuff. So like, you know, we thought it was like we we're going to dive into resumes, but then you started into mindset. What was that like for you? Uh, that was actually interesting. So, you know, when initially you and I had talked about it before actually I signed up for the program, I had a certain idea in mind. But when I actually got into the program, I saw, you know, it's not just about uh, the tangible things like resumes, cover letters or, you know, your LinkedIn profiles, but there are other aspects of. Uh, and you know, the, one of the most important was mindset. You know, having understanding of what your mindset is, and then also understanding that you can always change your mindset over time. You know, it's not going to be something fixed; it's fluid. So that was one of the important things. You know, going through the modules and talking to you, and then through the group coaching sessions, uh, I was able to see you know other people actually implementing and actually getting jobs. Uh, I do remember uh, there was a lady uh, who was in the medical uh, data and. Uh, she was looking for a profile in medical data and she had certainly getting, start getting a lot of interviews and then she was interviewing. Uh, and it was after she had gone through your program and you know, she had shared her experiences. So for me, it ended up being, you know, understanding, okay, this is the mindset aspect of it. Uh, there are other aspects I need to think of uh, as I'm pursuing this, uh, as I'm looking for new opportunities, because it's not just about getting those opportunities. It's also about once I get into those opportunities, how I you know, grow in those opportunities. So one of the uh, early uh, seminars I attended was which uh, was one which you had uh, uh, delivered with Pat, uh, I believe on engineering leadership. So, you know, that kind of got me interested. Okay, and I need to think from this perspective that, okay, I don't have to have an official title to be a leader as an engineer. I can just informally, you know, lead by taking responsibility you know, and taking the approach of uh, propping up my teammates uh, and not just think about pushing my, putting myself. So I took kind of, you know, that outward mindset uh, kind of started to come across. Okay, I started to understand this is what it means. And uh, I think the most important thing from um, the program, which I understood was as I started doing the modules that everything is a skill, which it's like a muscle that if I work it enough in the right way, I can develop it. Uh, so that was some of the learning which I took away, you know, that I don't have to consider that it has, it's fixed. I can change it. Uh, which is pretty obvious, you know, in day-to-day -day life, we do that on lots of different things. But career-wise, sometimes I think, uh, like, personally, I kind of felt stagnated in my head, like, okay, you know, this is all I know. If I'm not a good public speaker, probably I'm never going to be one. Uh, but I think going through the program and identifying my strengths and weaknesses 
uh, being logical about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it helped uh, organize my thoughts and have a plan in place, which I can implement and execute over a period of time to get mm -hmm. where I am. Yeah, and so obviously we're trying to take that big picture approach through the career transition process, but also looking forward and like, hey, we want you to make some shifts for the long term and, and really um, continue your career forward in a positive way. Now, when um, now there's a so how did that influence you, like the mindset shifts that you make, and how did that actually change how you connected with people and started, you know, networking and getting interviews? Can I remember one conversation that we had where you're like, hey that mindset shift was the biggest thing. And now I like this week, you know, one week you had like seven or eight interviews in one week and then a few job offers that came around, you know, soon after that. So how, why did, was that so influential in you connecting with people and getting those interview opportunities? So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's something I hadn't realized before that, you know, when you uh, reach out to people, you don't have to be in a bit that, you know, you're reaching out to them just because you want something from them. You know, you can also reach out to them because, Yes, you want something from them, but you also can give them something, a new perspective. <laughs> so you I don't have to think of everything as a transaction. So when I started reaching out to people on LinkedIn, I just reached out to them and out of curiosity. You know, these folks, uh, a lot of the engineers uh, have been in the industry I want to go to. Uh, some of them have similar backgrounds. Some of them have very traditional backgrounds uh, to get into that industry. So I wanted to get their perspective. I, you know, I never actually reached out to them. You know, I want a job. Can you connect me somewhere? I said like, okay, I just want to reach out to you. I'm trying to do this. I would like to get your perspective on, uh, you know, how I can go about doing this. This is my background. I don't feel very confident because of, you know, I don't have a traditional background, but I do have confidence in my skill sets. So what should I highlight? And I got uh, in, during interviews or talking to recruiters, and I got some good feedback. And I do recall uh, you know, a very um, distinct conversation I had with one of uh, uh, the contacts I made on LinkedIn. And I didn't know this person. Uh, he was probably he had been uh, he's 20 years older than me so you know he had been in the industry for a really long time and in the beginning i felt a little, little bit intimidated talking to him uh, but i had reached out he was very warm uh, in you know in re receiving my uh, uh, request uh, he said yes you know let's set up some time and he gave me some good pointers uh, you know about uh, getting into software fields from a mechanical engineering background uh, you know and he uh, talked with me for an hour. Uh, we went through over, you know, what my background is, where I feel that I need a little bit more work or don't feel as much confident as I should. Uh, and then, you know, he gave me, uh, he, he was pretty straightforward and he gave me, you know, the bottom line, this is what you need to do. And this is what you need to showcase. Uh, and I had heard a lot of those things from, you know, other people and read about him, but getting to hear the same thing from a person who's working in the same role in a very senior position, uh, you know, who is potentially a hiring manager, uh, that kind of gives you confidence. Okay, you know that person says yes, you can do it. You just need to kind of polish yourself. Uh, so uh, you know this whole process, uh, uh, the, the program, you know, thinking from an outward mindset, uh, not going with pre preconceived uh, you know notions in my head, not being uh, uh, inhibited by oh I'm asking for something from someone. Uh, it, I think it was just getting over those things and thinking of you know. Um, LinkedIn, it's a social media platform, but it's for mm -hmm. work and everyone knows that. So treat it as such, you know, people reached out to each other for professional help, advice uh, to make contacts. Mm -hmm. And I made some, uh, you know, splendid, you know, uh, very, very good contacts. And once mm -hmm. I got a job, I actually reached out to those uh, folks again. I thanked them for their advice and guidance, uh, especially with the folks who talked to me a lot about, you know, they spent an hour or so talking to me. And I made sure, and I thanked them mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, told them like, this is where I'll be going. And, you know, this is how you had guided me and, you know, really appreciate it. Uh, and also, you know, ask like, if, you know, if they're available, maybe I can buy them a coffee, you know, and just uh, mm -hmm. thank them in person. Um, so, uh, I, I, and that also kind of made me a little bit more confident of reaching out on LinkedIn. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I started the process, I had like 400 connections. Uh, now I have like almost 700 connections. Oh, wow. Uh, and a lot of them are from my uh, my old company, Intuitive, uh, I hadn't connected with anyone because I was, I think for some reason I was very innovative and shy about it. Uh, but now I reached out to a lot of folks, a lot of senior folks, you know, higher you know, principal engineers, fellows, and just wanted to connect with them. Even though I'm leaving the company, I figured, you know, it's good to connect with them, uh, be in touch with them. Uh, so I, I tried to uh, expand my network. Mm -hmm. um, and for a brief moment, you know, for a few months, I actually took the premium LinkedIn account to make sure I can reach out to people, have sufficient access, uh, accessibility 
the resources on LinkedIn, uh, and it really helped. Uh, so you know, it gave me a whole. Uh, I would say the program and and the con the the, the things you uh, teach in the program they kind of uh, guided me. Okay, you know, this is how I can uh, build my network, how I can leverage my network mm -hmm. for future career growth, and also from a social perspective, right? Because work is not just you know, it's not just work, work, work. There's a social aspect of work. So it's important to be able to interact with people, uh, you know, know what they're thinking. That's the way you innovate in professionally. Uh, so I think I've been able to build some meaningful connections too as I enter a new industry uh, yeah. you know, and work towards growing in there. Yeah, and that was a, it was a big shift for you to, to move from your mechanical engineering background over to software. I mean, you, you did a, a whole degree program around that to help you when you're building a portfolio and different things. But, okay, so talk to me about the, the difference between before and after. like. Um, before, like how many interviews and things have you had? We started working together and how many interviews and then offers, and obviously you took a new offer. Uh, did you get in the end? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, before I was so hesitant to apply, I actually had no offers because okay. I hadn't applied. I was just looking internally at intuitive. I reached out to some recruiters and applied on something, but you know, I didn't really get any interview calls or anything. Uh, and I, I think a lot of it was just because uh, my resume, it wasn't set very well. It didn't highlight my strengths. Uh, mm -hmm. my, I had a portfolio, but it, it wasn't complete. Uh, I just felt stuck in my head. Like I, I didn't feel, you know, I was actually putting myself out there and, you know, I, I, I was putting my best foot forward mm -hmm. to, to recruiters or hiring managers. So once I, you know, I think once, once I started implementing some of the, uh, uh, the, the knowledge which you you know uh, imparted in in, a, in the modules and in, in the one on one coachings and in the group sessions, uh, that kind of helped me organize my thoughts. You know the way I need to present myself, understand these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses. How how should I talk about them? Uh, you know prepare uh, answers. You know use the star method. Figure mm -hmm. out uh, what I should say, when I should say. If there's a weakness, how do I uh, evaluate that weakness? Uh, you know honestly. You know not try to uh, sugarcoat it, you know, figure out this was my weakness. What did I do about it? How do I work towards it? And if I haven't done something, what do I plan on doing about it? Mm -hmm. uh, if there's some, if, if I have a strength, then have uh, good examples to talk about the strength, you know, just to showcase my strengths. Uh, so I, I think the program helped me organize myself uh, in my head, uh, you know, because there's so many moving, moving parts. Also having a full-time job and finding a job, like, which is in, in itself a full-time job, uh, I think uh, it helped me not spend a lot of time trying to just research and build this, you know, base, uh, base knowledge of understanding, you know, how to get a new job. Uh, and since I was transitioning into a different field, you know, from a mechanical background to software, uh, even though I had a robotics degree, a lot of companies or recruiters uh, upfront, even after I joined your program, they said, okay, you know, it doesn't seem like, you know, you have enough experience. Um, so it took me uh, a while to understand, you know, how to present myself to these recruiters mm -hmm. and companies. So, uh, you know, I joined your program in January and we started working through it. It took me a while, I think almost a month to get through my LinkedIn, my resume, my portfolio. Uh, start uh, in February on, which I started working uh, into, on developing answers for my interview questions. Uh, I, I also shared some with you, I think in some time in March, uh, in that time frame, uh, some of the common questions which I thought, you know, might would be good to have a good answers to. I, I worked on a lot of questions, you know, try to attack um, questions from different angles, uh, because I saw that a lot of questions ask the same thing in just different wordings. Mm -hmm. So I try to uh, tailor my answers to different way of asking the question and answering that question. Uh, and then I would say, you know, I started getting interview calls uh, sometime end of February. In March, I had a few calls, uh, I, I would say two or three. Uh, but by the end of March and beginning of April, I almost ended up having seven or eight calls like in the second week of April, third week of April. So it's like, okay, uh, I had to interview every single day or sometimes having multiple interviews in a day. And it just ended up being, uh, if I count my number correctly, I ended up interviewing with around uh, 12 to 13 companies. Uh, and uh, in which I actually talked to the managers or someone in the company who's not a recruiter. And I did talk to a plenty of more recruiters uh, mm -hmm. in that period. And out of those, I, I did get offer from uh, three companies uh, in by end of April. Uh, and I accepted one of them, uh, which is uh, a company based in Pittsburgh and they're in autonomous vehicle technology that I'll be working in Palo Alto. And uh, 
there were some other companies who were still in the in process of interviewing me. So I had to decline them. You know, once I accepted the offer, I told them, you know, I don't want to waste your time or my time on this. So mm -hmm. thank you for the opportunity. So, you know, just uh, with the program, I was able to go from a state where I was very unorganized in my head, you know, not knowing what to do and you know, trying to balance work and the pressure of interviewing, preparing for it to be able to, okay, just follow this uh, simple track of doing things, you know, get your resume organized, get your interviewing uh, questions figured out, start networking, talk to people. And you have to do a lot of these things in parallel. You know, it's a very iterative process. So I was able to just follow that process. And I think over a period of uh, two months, you know, from January to mid of March, like two months, mid January to mid March, I was able to get, get do a lot of the groundwork. And mm -hmm. I think once that was done by end of March, early April, I started getting like a lot of interviews. Uh, yeah. so the job I accepted, um, I actually got the call for that in late February. You know, the first interview was in late February. So I still you know, ended up using, uh, you know, going for the job, which I, uh, company which interviewed me the first but no i still think the program helped me get those exponential increase in number of interviews mm -hmm. once i had built that base you know once yeah. i was out there reaching out to recruiters um so i so i would say there was a big change from mm -hmm. before being very unorganized not knowing what to do to having this uh uh, paths laid out and me just having to execute it not think about it for sure uh, for sure and uh, I assume you got a financial ROI and a, and a salary bump as well. I, I did, process, yes. Right? <laughs> yes. So, so that's good. So final question, what would you say to anyone who's sort of on the fence or thinking about potentially joining the Engineering Career Accelerator Program? Uh, I would say talk to me. I can give some, <laughs> some, some ideas, you know, uh, uh, but, you know, how I felt about it in person. But uh, in, in, in all uh, uh, honesty, you know, it was an amazing program. You know, it helped me organize my time, you know, use my time well uh, a lot of folks who might end up using this program would be uh, folks who are already working and you know i don't have kids so it's not a lot of uh, you know other things to do but a lot of people might have kids so i think just thinking from all perspective right uh, it, there's an old saying that you know do not reinvent the wheel or uh, as engineers also say you know let's not reinvent the wheel so if there's a lot of the information which you need is already there well organized and if there is someone to guide you through it, I think it's better to just leverage that than trying mm -hmm. to start from scratch and you know end, end up spending like a year trying to just figure those things out and then get the same result. Mm -hmm. So in, in my mind, you know, the program would help anyone um, you know, jump uh, to executing, uh, getting a job, you know, to all the things you need to do to execute to get a job, then actually first research, find what you need to do and then execute to get a job. So you end up not doing uh, the things which, you know, which, which, which we know, but are not really organized in our heads. You know, like we know mm -hmm. that we need to network, but a lot, a lot of us feel inhibited because of maybe, uh, you know, how we are, you know, some of us are introverts, yeah. some of us are extroverts. So I think the program just helps us, you know, walk through those things, gives us uh, uh, the confidence that yes, uh, because we also get to meet other people in the group coaching mm -hmm. sessions, for instance. So you know, talking to them, you see that there are other people who might be in the same situation who are trying to do something similar. Uh, it kind of gives you a community, a community to be with, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, also uh, a connection. You know that okay, you know, you're not the only one looking for jobs right now because it yeah. can be a very uh, lonely experience to find a new mm -hmm. job because you know you can't talk to anyone at work. Uh, sometimes you also feel it. Uh, like I personally was a bit um, uh, uh, innovative to talk to my friends about it, right? That's, mm -hmm. At this time, I didn't want to, you know, just start blabbering about it. You know, I'm looking for this job or something and this is what I'm doing. So having that community where you can tell, okay, you know, this week I've been doing with these people uh, and, you know, uh, and this is what I'm doing. This was my experience. Uh, it, it's nice to be able to share with some people uh, that, for sure. you know, what you're going through. Um, sure. anyway. So that well, would be my... Um, yeah, that's great. So thank you so much for, for sharing this, Natish. It's been so much fun to get to know you and connect with you through this process and to see uh, the changes and the increased confidence you have. And obviously excited about, you know, your new career move and the opportunities and the growth that you'll see in the future. So just make sure to stay connected and, uh, and um, wish you nothing but the best as you continue forward here. Thank you.